war am I begun? We say, War am I to God? Just sit and let's just sing that worship song to God. War am I to God? We say, War am I to God? We say, are not singing yet. You want it's behind a devotion. We want to enter into God's presence and share the word of God. So we solemnly, in everywhere you seated, let's honor the Lord, speaking about his wonders. He brought us since Wednesday. What's wrong? Please let's walk on the microphone. This hand is not the right one. He has brought us here since Wednesday. And by the grace of God, He has been taking care of us. He has restored many of us back. Now you have the peace of God. Now you found that all those guilt you are carrying has been lifted. You are full of His joy. Also, God has taken you through a process of deliverance from some things you don't even know. And last night, we were talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I know that in one, two years' time, you will know that God has deposited great virtue in your lives in the name of Jesus. And tonight, God is going to perfect all His plans. Sorry, this morning, God is going to perfect all his plans for your life. He didn't just bring you here for fun. He brought you here to order your life. To give you direction. Somebody there is talking, can you see? You are talking to your friend in devotion. Father, we ask that you grant our technical people the wisdom to manage us this morning in the name of Jesus. If it is microphone, you can give me another one. Please, let's find the answer quickly. I want a good sound that anybody can hear and understand. I shouldn't be struggling to be heard. So we take that song again with a heart of honor for God. And I'll be looking at everybody I want us to sing it solemnly. Worshiping the almighty God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. What a mighty God we say. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we say. Hey. Even angels bow before me. What a my regard we said. What a my regard. What a my regard. We said. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels 
I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise, I will praise him from everlasting, yeah, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I ask that you breathe on your children. As we look up to you this morning, Lord, breathe on your children and give them life. Give them strength. Let someone say, Father. Children, are you there? Say, Father. Can you say, Heavenly Father? Give me strength. Give me fresh grace. Give me fresh anointing. This early morning, in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now, prayer is real. When you are weak, if you say, Jesus, give me strength, strength to come. You see, when we are praying for you, when we say fire, you see fire will come. You can't see with the eyes, but you can see when it drops in the body. Anytime you pray from your heart to God, he will answer you. You try it. I'm teaching you what I've experienced. There are times I've used all my strength out. I've just said that yeah, now I exchange my strength for yours. And you see, once you believe, it happens. But when you don't believe, if you want to gamble, maybe God will do it. He won't do it. Because God does not work with people that doubt. Now can you say, Father, I receive your strength to receive the best from you this morning in the name of Jesus. Can you say, Father, anoint me afresh today in the name of Jesus. Can you say, Father, give me understanding spirit this morning in the name of Jesus. And so it shall be for you. I say, so it will be for you in the name of Jesus. Now, from our morning devotion, we have gone through a lot of discussion. And I want to be sure you are following what God was teaching you. The first devotional section, you were looking at what Jesus taught about wisdom. Who Jesus called wise men. Can you help me bring pastor manager from there to the high table here? Please bring him up here. So I want three people. Two girls and one boy. Can you come up here and tell us what, who are the people that Jesus called wise men? So that by way of review, within two minutes, come and come forward if you want to come. Come. No, uh, don't wait for anybody. Okay, there is a boy here. Yes. There are some of you who don't respond when we call. It's only the same people that come. Can't you become somebody that we manifest? No, the brother has come. He participated in Bible. Eh? Is there somebody who has not participated in anything that wants to come? Oh, yeah. If you have participated in something, yeah. Somebody who has not participated in anything. Another girl there, I know she has not participated. You have not participated in anything. Good. One more girl who has not participated in anything. Yes. And you want to stand out and say, now I'm going up. Yes, come up. Come up, come up, come up. You must be willing when you are not willing, God cannot do anything with you. You must be willing. Can you put up the fan for me, please? I think the technical people should do it, man. Okay. So you can go and sit down, my dear. Or stay. It's good to have the four of you. Since you have stepped up, you are hope forever. Can you say amen to that? I say you are hope forever. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Now, what did Jesus teach us? Why well, you are the first devotion? Did you attend the first devotion? You didn't attend, so you wouldn't know that. Sit down, go and sit down. 
somebody else who has never participated in anything, a girl, oh yeah, come, come, come. And you are the first devotion. Please be fast. Oh yeah, come, my dear. Come, come, come. The first devotional session. So what did Jesus teach us? Can, can I have microphone for them? Thank you. From the first board. What did Jesus teach us about wisdom? If they wake you up tomorrow and they are asking you, what is Jesus teaching about people that are wise? What will you tell that person? Yes? People who hear my word and do it are wise. And people who don't know who hear my word and do not do it are foolish. So people who hear my words and do it are what? Wise. Are wise. Okay. I know some other yeah, that's fine. Go and sit down. Put your hands together for yes. Jesus told them a parable about a white about a man who built his house on a on a rock. And when the winds and when the winds blew, the the rain came, it the house still stood strong. And the man who built his house on sand, when the winds came, the rain fell, his hand his house scattered. Can you hear that? He told us a story about a man who built his house on a sound. Rain came, wind came, and what happened to the house? Is scattered. Then another person who built his house on the rock, rain also came to that. Wind came, and the house stood strong. You are blessed. Yes? Is that love? And Jesus likens um, to people who obey his word and listen to it as a wise man who built his house on a rock. Mm -hmm. And so that when the wind and the storms of life come, his house is built strongly on the rock. While those who don't listen to his word and obey them, it's, they are likened unto a man that built his house on a sandy soil. And when the storms of life came, it fell and scattered. The Lord bless Put your hands together for her. Yes. The wise men in the Bible, Jesus also said that the rock that the, the, our life is about we standing on the rock, that people who do things of God and they follow the instructions of God are wise, but people who do their will and don't even listen to God are foolish. God bless you. We yeah, have put your hands together for the four of them. Now, that devotion was dedicated for us to know what the Redeemer of our soul taught us about wisdom. When the Lord put Adam and Eve in the garden, he taught them something. Abby, he told them, oh yeah, take, keep this place, tend it. And then look at that tree. Don't eat of what? Of the fruit of it. And he left them there. And when the Lord went, another person came to them. Are you hearing me? This person didn't know how God puts them there. This person didn't care. In rebellion, he came and started talking to them that, why did God say you should not eat? Oh yeah, eat it. Can't you look at it? It's beautiful. Don't disturb anybody. I'm looking at all of you. Don't disturb anybody. Be looking at me here. I am starting from the beginning of the Bible on what Jesus taught. Immediately God left. Somebody else came and started teaching them something else. Very foolish of Eve. He started listening to something else. And hurt. And when the husband came too, very foolish of him. And the woman presented, he didn't ask, who gave you this? God told us. He didn't, just collected it and started eating it. Now, what happened to them thereafter? God chased them out of that beautiful place. They lost their destiny overnight. Is, is somebody hearing me? Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? We are starting, Jesus taught you. I'm now giving you practical illustration of what you have been reading since you were born in the Bible, in Genesis. Jesus chased them out. 
You remember the Bible said when God put them there, he blessed them. Abby, he told them to have dominion. I believe you should support me today. You should bring the, the Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 where God blessed them. Don't watch me, listen to it and support the ministry. Now, he blessed them. He told them to be fruitful, to have dominion. By the time they listened to the stranger's voice, what happened? The man who blessed them, what did he do for them? Somebody, he cursed them. So when we don't listen to God, we are turning blessing to a curse. Is somebody hearing me? So everything in the Bible is the same, consistent. So when Jesus then came, knowing how they fell in Genesis, when he came back in the book of Matthew, that is the first book of New Testament, when he died on the cross, he now started teaching them again that everybody that is living on earth is a wise man when God instructs them and they make a covenant to walk in what God has instructed them to do. And he said, everybody on the earth that listens to the word of God and once he gets out of church or camp and you are doing something else, he said, they are like what? Who are they? Foolish. Foolish. Why? Because the one teaching you is the one who created the world. Is the one who created the wind. Is somebody hearing me? Holy Ghost. Are you here? He created the rain. He created the sun. And he knows their power. And so, he knew that when you follow his words, there is no condition in the world that can bring you down. Now, listen very carefully from that first devotion. When you leave here, that stranger is going to come and begin to teach you something else. In some of the books you are going to read in school, they are going to tell you to go and have sex at the age of 13 in some of the books. They are going to, you are going to read in a book. If you Google, they will tell you masturbation is not wrong. Put it on the Google and ask for it. It's on the internet that to masturbate is not wrong. It's there. They are going to teach you something else. The Bible has taught you masturbation is a sin. The God of the Bible is telling you if you are masturbating as a young child, it is what? Hey, damn it, look, what is it? And you must stop it. You have repented already. Many of you have given your life to you. You are a child of God. Don't follow the world. Who are you, everybody? Ah, I can't hear you. Who are you? You are a child of God. You are king and princess of the living God. You are royalty. You are peculiar children. You are not like the children of the drug addicts. You don't belong to Yahoo life. There is an arrangement from heaven to make you great. Am I communicating? Are you hearing me, children? If you are feeling sleepy, just stand up, okay? You just stand before you know it, it will go. That's why I was asking you to ask for God's strength. We both left here. You left here before me. I'm also standing. Are you with me? So our first devotion tells you that the enemy is going to come. The devil is going to come. Some teacher you are going to meet, they are going to come. They are going to teach you something else. If you listen to them, you are gone. They are going to bring gender theory. They are going to be, bring woman philosophy to contradict the Bible principle that has been taught to you. It is you who say, sorry, I don't believe in what you are teaching me. I believe the God of the Bible. Then you see God standing by your side. When Daniel was in Babylon, Babylon said they want to give him something else. He said, sorry, I am following the Lord. I have proposed. I have a covenant with the living God. And I always want all of you to know today that 
When Daniel became a slave in that Babylon, slave, you know what a slave is? They have been taken away from their father. Maybe their fathers have even been killed by Joachim. They have been taken away from their mother. They were slaves in Babylon where you are reading their story. The only thing they took there was their relationship with God. What is the only thing they took there, everybody? Now you have a relationship with the Almighty God. My children, are you hearing me? You have what? Hello? You have what now? Now you are the ask. You have what now? I say you have a relationship with who? With God now. That was all that Daniel had. Relationship with God. It is your greatest asset. When you are connected with the Almighty, under any condition, if you can stand, you will have the victory. You will have the direction. But once you ignore the instruction of your father in heaven, and you take to the instruction of the foolish men in the world, and you use it to run your life, you are carried away by wind. Some boys will come and tell you fable. You see those who tell you that menstrual crime, cram, when you have it, it is sex. They know how to deceive. And if you too want pleasure and you submit to that, they will defile you and destroy your life. STD, HIV, all kinds of terrible things are on that lane. The devil didn't tell them cause is there. They obeyed him and they, they, they were swept off. I prophesy on your life today, you will not be swept off. Your destiny will not be swept off. The anointing that is on your life will not be taken away. When Samson forgot the father who anointed him, what happened to his anointing? He died and wasted it. Don't leave the camp and forget what we are teaching you. Even your parents may want to persuade you to drop it. You see your Gogoro father yesterday, Abi. Tell him about Logogoro Yaninun tell watch Lana. Sometimes even your, your father may be a bad one. O Gogoro ni say, if children can't go to school, let them go to shop and be selling biscuits. There are irresponsible fathers like that. But when the hand of God, look, look at the hand of God on that boy. He was a stammerer. Baba came himself to correct it. Baba raised a good teacher to mentor him. That's how God raised destiny helpers on the lane of life. And I pray for you. The Lord will raise destiny helpers for you. Yeah. On the lane of the world in the name of Jesus. So number two. Yesterday in our devotion. What was the title of yesterday sharing everybody? What was yesterday thing we shared? Pillar of wisdom. Tell him to stand up. We have agreed. Just stand up for one minute. And the, the sleep will be gone. What did we share yesterday? Eh? You can't remember what we shared. Okay. We shared pillars of wisdom. How many pillars of wisdom did we touch? Seven. Seven pillars. If you are going to live like a wise man, there are seven pillars on which he stands. And somebody, what is pillar number one? Ah, fear of God. Anybody who doesn't fear God cannot live in the wisdom of God. Why? Because fear of God stabilizes your life. When the devil is moving you to do something, you will remember. Ah, this big father, he seen me. Oh, I gave you an illustration. God don't, not only see what you do, he sees what you are thinking about. Do you know he does that? Before you think your thoughts, he knows them. Because he's the omniscience God. Why will you hide from such a person? David looked at God one day. He said, if I go into darkness, his eyes is, he sees better. The eyes of God sees better. Where? Even in darkness. Are you able to see in darkness? But God's own eyes sees better in darkness. Why? He created the cat. How many of you know that cat can see in the night? Uh -huh. He created the eyes that can see in the night. If he created the eye that can see in the night for God, what about him? Who created it? 
One day, when we were buying CCTV, they first gave me the impression that there are some CCTV that can see in darkness. I found that it's a lie. It's what? It's only God that can see inside darkness. They call it infrared. They put it there. They said there is a minimum level of light that will make it work. Because there is nothing anybody can create that can make you see. It's only God that sees in darkness. So, in the seven pillars, the first of them is the fear of God. The fear of God will keep you from polluting yourself because you know this body belongs to who? Who owns your body? Who owns your body? I be one body. You see the way I like. You will destroy yourself. But when you have God's fear, you know it's omnipotent, it's omniscience, it's omnipresent. Ah! I can't hide. I can hide from my mommy, but I can't hide from God. I can hide from my teacher, but I can't hide from God. I can hide from the pastor, but can you hide from God? Somebody answer me. Can you hide from God? When you are in the toilet, is God there or not? He's there. Can I follow you to the toilet? Even if I want to go, you say, pastor, go away. Go away. I don't want to see you here. But can you stop God? Because that's why you must fear him. Somebody you can't stop. You can't stop him. Amen. Pillar number two. What? Eh? Good. Good. You must have heart for what? Your heart must like what? I am instructing you again now. Do you like it? <laughs> if you don't like it, say bye bye to De La Roy. Oh, your wallet no cooper is disturbing us. He's just shouting on us. All I'm saying to the person is shout because he does not like what? Instruction. So, if you want to be a wise person, your heart must cherish instruction. Because, uh, you know, one of the best ways to live the best life is to have good instruction and follow them. So, and when your heart cherishes what is God saying and you follow it, you get the best. You get the best. You get the best. Because God is the best. Amen. Number three. Ah, are you sleeping? Number three. Search for what? You must seek to know the truth. Know what is right. Don't follow fable. Don't follow fable. Follow the truth. Search to know what is the truth. They may tell you, Chinobu has died. You begin to look. Is he correct? Before you believe, you do what? You begin to search for knowledge to know it is true. It is wrong. Don't just believe anything people tell you. Search to know what is right. In your book, they teach you fallacy. Read about fallacy and know what is good about it. They teach you, what again, boy's law, Abby? Uh -huh. Or they teach you, uh, what is it, trade by butter. How many of you have had trade by butter before? Uh -huh. You go and read about it and know what is correct. That is set for not about When they teach you read by butter, you don't read anything. And you want to go and pass in the exam. You can't pass. Because God didn't set up the world for people who don't seek for knowledge. You must read around whatever you are taught. Even the things I'm teaching you, each of the pillars, we can spend one day teaching about them. Each of those pillars. So search for knowledge. Because we can be looking at how do we search for knowledge. What are the kind of knowledge that's available? It can go on and on like that. Number four. Understanding. When you search for knowledge, you must reflect to understand what you are reading. And I told you about the story of an Ethiopian you know, who was reading the Bible but don't, didn't understand it. There are some people they read, professor, they have no understanding. They are empty, they are foolish, and they are professor. There is a difference between search for knowledge and understanding of what? Of the knowledge. 
It is the understanding that make knowledge profitable. Am I communicating? I have told you, I have given you instruction. If you are feeling sleepy, what do I say you should do? Stand up. Don't deceive yourself. If you are feeling sleepy, what do I say you should do? And stand up. Stand up. Oh, yeah, stand up. Say, so you know you are feeling sleepy. Oh, yeah, stand up. And take your Bible and be listening. It's simple instruction. That's how to live great life. Just obey instruction. And your life will be smooth. No crisis. No accident. No miss gap. But when you are patching, you are doing it your own way. It won't work. Instructions are good. They, 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 they make our life great. What is number five, everybody? Number five. Discretion. 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 Don't be like a moon. Don't be like, oh, you have to tie me or you have to go like this. You must use your discretion. Discretion makes you creative. Discretion means you look, the, I have given you instruction. Oh, yeah, go and sweep that place. When you take broom, you look for the best way to clean the place. That's discretion. Applying your discretion, your senses. To carry out assignment, instruction, the best way. Those are pillars. Number six. Number six. Uh -uh. Number six. Eh? That's number six. You are confusing us. I'm testing them. You are giving them answer. That's not the way to go. After they say it, you can support them. You have gone to number seven. I'm testing their knowledge. What is number six? You are saying you are saying number seven when I'm talking about number six. What is number six? Counsel. What did I teach you about counsel? Oh yeah, you come, 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 come. You blue, come, come. What did I tell you about counsel? What did I tell you about counsel? Seven pillars. Can you remember what I told you about counsel? You can't remember. Okay. Um, you seek counsel when to gain wisdom. You seek counsel. To gain wisdom. You seek counsel. When you have something in your mind that you don't really understand or it's not clear to you, so you have to seek counsel. You seek counsel. But when you don't understand something and you are behaving as if you understand, you are failed already. Go and sit down. That's why we use this. Put, put your hands together for him. That's the word. Seek wise people. They seek counsel. It is wisdom to seek counsel on things you don't know or things you don't know how to handle when you are confused. When somebody is disturbing your life and they are bigger than you, you don't know how to handle them. Seek counsel. That's why that woman yesterday taught you if somebody is a teacher and is talking to you, look for somebody bigger than him. Can you remember? Somebody higher than him. Who can call him to order? Who can deal with him for you? Because you can't deal with him. Seek for counsel. That's why we started the Bible saying, the multitude of counsel, what happened? In the multitude of counsel, what happened? Hey, my Bible. In the multitude of counsel, what happened? There is safety. Your life is safe in the multitude of counsel. When you listen to counsel, you live in safety. I decree today, receive the heart to seek for counsel. Yeah. There are some things you go to your mommy. Mommy, I'm going through this, so how do I handle it? Well, some of you will keep it. You now go and go to your, your, your peer group. Who does not know anything yet? Tita, or back home, counsel yet. Who himself does not know his right hand from what? From his left. You must go to somebody who knows better. Who is higher. Who is godly. Not somebody who will complicate your life problem. And lead your life by fable. And you fumble. Seek counsel. Number seven pillar. Eh? Uh -huh. Can you now put it there? 
take correction when we correct you. People who are correcting you are not your enemy. They want your life to be great. When mommy and daddy is correcting you, they didn't hate you. When your teacher is correcting you from rough play, they didn't hate you. When they don't give you football all the time, they didn't hate you because you cannot be using your life to just be playing football alone. Thank God, our mommy, our mother even told you that if you say you are a footballer, at what age do some of the footballers retire? Can you remember she taught you? What age? 35, 37. After 37, what will you be doing? You'll be playing. Because you don't have enough strength more. That is when their strength is best. And the one will use your best strength and drop you. There are people who have played for Nigeria. They don't know them again. That's why, you, that's why I told you, you must prepare yourself so that when your hobby that you are doing drop you, you can pick something else up. Receive wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. So those are the seven pillars. Go back to your notes. Scriptures, I gave you scripture for them. Read them and imbibe them. Cherish like people who correct you. Don't sit down there. When you are feeling sleepy, stand up. They are correcting you. And it's a correction of love. When you see somebody who allow you to rot in, to do what you like, you want to drink by, say, go and be drinking there at your age. You want to do, say, go and be drinking. Run away from them. That's why some of you like some grandma. You know some grandma? Even if you are wee wee on the bed, we say, my daughter, my daughter, we see the club in your brain, we first finish a year. So you now think grandma loves you better than your real mother. He didn't love you more. They, are, they just want to spoil you, and when you grow up, you don't find direction again. You can't manage your life. But when you see people correct you sharply, don't go that way. This is the way to go. This is the way to go. They are building you. They are toughening you to handle life. And I decree today, may God give you grace to walk by these pillars in the name of Jesus. This is day three. Devotion three. Then you ask me, what are we going to be looking at today? What is it? God name wisdom is in your program. Look at your program. What are we looking at today? Everybody, what are we looking at today? Godly wisdom. So that suggests to you that there are different kinds of what? There are different, we are going to look at all the different kinds. Some school that I go, within five minutes they gave me your school. I tried to summarize it. We are going to study it here this morning. There are different kinds of what? Wisdom. Are you listening to me, girl? There are different kinds of what? There are different kinds of wisdom. Can we turn our Bible to James chapter 3? And we are going to start from verse 13. James chapter 3. And we are starting from verse 13. Can you ask them if our breakfast is ready? Who is doing that for us? James chapter 3 and verse 13. Can we read it together, everybody? Now, that is simply that, you know, that is also the, what James is teaching is the same thing Jesus is teaching. If somebody is wise and carry understanding among you, how do we see it? How do we see wisdom and understanding? Adam alone, how do we see it? Eh? By what? Don't be afraid. You are correct. Yes? By what? By your conduct. Good. When you are doing bad conduct, is that wisdom? Is that understanding? So anytime you are behaving badly, you are disobedient. You are telling lies. You are doing riotous things. Those are bad conducts. 
Wisdom is demonstrated by what? Good. Hello. Good conduct. That's the Bible. Okay. Thank you. Wisdom is demonstrated by good conduct. That's what he says. He say, I'm a wise boy. I am a wise girl. You must see it in the way you carry yourself. In the way you relate with your friend. If you are somebody who is fighting or that, ah, ah, this one cannot be wisdom. This one doesn't have understanding. If I'm a touch, yeah. Stand up now. Yes, as your spiritual. Ah, yes, you stand up. You are blessed. I say you are blessed. Verse 14. Verse 14. Can we read it? If you are bitter. Can we be more organized? One, two, three, go. Okay. He say if you are bitter, envy, and self-seeking, you are selfish. Everything you know is about yourself. If they give two of you food, you want to eat everything, and the other person go hungry. Uh -huh. Say, don't deceive yourself. You don't have wisdom. That's what he said. Number 15. 15. Yes, can we read it? Don't forget, we are coming from 13, 14. He then say, wisdom that makes you to be seeking only things about yourself. Wisdom that makes you to be envious. Now, if I see another pastor now preaching in Lagos as I'm preaching to teenagers, should I be envious of him? Can I do what is in Lagos in Ilefe? So, when, he said when you are envious, when you are self-seeking, when you are self-centered, when you are selfish, see, the wisdom does not descend from where? Where does he come from? Head, number two. Sense, number three. Demonic. So, they've given us three types of wisdom first now. Because we have four types. How many types of wisdom do we have? Four. But three is here. So let's take those one up now. Praise the Lord. So everybody look here. Everybody look here. We are right on verse 15. We have read 13, 14, 15 of James chapter 3. So in the three verses... The Bible has introduced us to what they call heartly wisdom. Everybody say heartly wisdom. Not heart. Heartly, can we say it? Heartly wisdom. I can't hear you. Can we say heartly wisdom? Now the wisdom people practice on heart is that you take care of yourself and you don't want to know what happens to somebody else. That is the common wisdom. That's why you see everybody on the earth, when they are doing business, it is how to cheat. How many of you have mommy that said things? They will, they will, they are Congo. They will, they will bash it under so that the guy will not be fooled. Are you listening to me? Heartless wisdom. There is a wisdom of people on the earth which is selfish, envious, Then the second one, sensual what? Your sense. God gave you sense. But sense wisdom has their limitation. Let's look at sense wisdom. Sense wisdom will tell you, oh, there is cloud, rain is about to fall. Don't go out. The Bible then tell you, anybody that is looking at the weather will not move forward. God will not say, if you are looking at circumstance around your life, since we say, look at the circumstance, you don't have a father, you don't have a mother, who will send you to school, you are going to be riding your car. That is sense. Are you hearing me? Send me by. Send me. 
sense wisdom tell you that anybody who doesn't have father, who doesn't have mother, is that correct? It's not correct. Nobody to send him to school. It's not correct. Because there is a God in heaven that can raise up a father and a mother for you. Am I communicating? Anytime I see people who are stranded, I just laugh. Why? They didn't follow God to the network of their glory and blessing. God has structure on the earth to take care of anybody. But once you don't work with him, you miss it. So many times, since we tell you something cannot work, because two plus two is equal to four. But in the dictionary of God, one plus one is equal to what? One. Said so there are two different ways of buying Abby. Mathematics say one plus one is equal to what? Is two. But God's mathematics say one plus one is equal to what? Is one. Can you compare the two? So the mathematics of God to sense is stupidity. If you tell people, that's what the gender people are fighting. That God's mathematics is wrong. That God's mathematics is what? Is wrong. There are two people. They are not one. That's what they are saying. You are two. You are not one. It is true. By our sense, we know you are not one. But God says you are one. And if you follow his instruction, you see you soon become one. But the instruction of God many times because we don't have faith it's difficult for us to take to it. I'm showing you sensual wisdom where it doesn't work. So if sense experience or yet there is no way for you. The Bible told us that there is a God that makes a way where there seems to be what? No way! The Lord that makes a way in the wilderness make water to flow in the desert. So sense wisdom Ask where they are useful. Listen to me. Then you ask me, should we drop our sense? No. You use your sense to learn mathematics, physics, chemistry, economics. Your sense. Why? Because if God asks you now, Nifemi, yeah, come, 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 come. If God asks this girl, if God asks Nifemi, Nifemi is going to be a pastor who will be holding microphone like Joy Mayers. How many of you know Joy Mayers? <laughs> you, have, you have read about her. Okay, it's going to be holding microphone to preach to millions of people. Now, for that to become a reality, he needs to use his hand to go to school. Are you with me? Get a good degree so that he can read Bible very well. At times, he may go also with his sense to theological seminary to be able to understand how church is managed, how people are taught. Sense is useful for you to organize your life under the direction of heaven. Am I communicating? But knowing that she's going to be a pastor, can sense tell you that? Sense does not tell you where you are going. It is the Holy Ghost that tells you. Am I communicating? My knowledge in economic class to PhD level didn't tell me I should be gathering you here. Am I communicating? It is the Holy Ghost that told, tell me, that told me. But I use my sense to rent bus. Am I communicating? I use my sense to buy petrol into the bus. I use my sense to call Ketra. Am I communicating? Can you see sense? God give direction. You use your sense to implement it. Are you getting what I'm saying? As children who have gone through this in secondary school yet, now you should be praying. That is what course you are doing in the university. Because there are some course, when you pick them, that course will lock you up somewhere. If you become, say, a microbiologist, you can't wake up tomorrow and just change. I'm no longer a microbiologist. I am now an architect. Is it possible? Anytime you have pick a course, that course, you wear it like a garment. What do I say? It becomes a garment on your life. 
And people begin to say, if you are a medical, they say, a medical doctor, you have won that one. You can't just wake up tomorrow, I'm no longer a medical doctor, I'm now a banker. Watu ji ya dear koto di banker. You will now remove the garment of a medical doctor and started studying as what? And started studying as what? As a banker. That's why it is better now that you are very young. You begin to pray. Even if your parent is not praying, you begin to pray. Daddy, when I finish my SS3, I'm now in GSS1. I'm in GSS2. I'm in GSS3. Daddy, guide my life. Direct my path. When I go to my counselor in the school, let them speak your mind to me. Are you with me? And when the counselor guides you, you see God guiding your life. Amen. Go and sit down. You are blessed. Put your hands together for her. So, your senses are useful, but they have limitation. Am I communicating? Uh -huh. When you live by your sense alone, you get only the result of sense. Miracle will be out and far from your life. But when you bring the Lord and crown it on your sense, you'll be a balanced person. Do you understand the difference between the two now? Don't, they didn't say don't be. They, you must think. You must use your sense, but you must know where you use your sense, where you use the Holy Ghost, where you call upon God. If I'm using my sense alone, my auntie sin, my auntie walk go, my auntie jalu go. There was a time in my life I have three employment letter. How many employment letter? Are you hearing me? Three employment letter. One to work in a bank. The second one to work in a research institute. The third one to work in University of Lagos. Three employment letter in my hand. How do I know which one to pick? Sen what does sense tell you when you have three employment letter? You look at the letter, Sabi. It will away guide you. Abby? That's what sense tell you. Which one is the big money? Oh, this one. This one is 200,000. This one is 100,000. The third one, let's say it's 50,000. Which one should you pick by sense? Uh -huh. That's sense. Sense, it is sense, right? That's how sense works. But if you begin to pray, Sometimes you just take a weekend out and you lock up yourself in your room. You carry your Bible. You take your prayer book and say, Daddy, I have three employment letter. This one, me too, I like this big money. Oh. Who doesn't like big money? I like it, oh, but is it your way for my life? Should I go that way? And God told me, look, at, let me tell you what God told me. When I went to him, Seven days, I closed the chapter of everything and I sat in God's presence. All the noise, we are, all the tongue we are speaking at, you say, what stupid thing are these people speaking? And God told me, I have not raised you up to count money. I have raised you up to touch lives. Are you hearing that? Who will tell you that if you don't have Holy Ghost? Your sense will just tell you, go for money, money, money. And then let me tell you the bad story about it. The bank that gave me a letter for big money, there is a car in that letter. Abby, there is annual journey to abroad with my family. Anytime I have a leave, you like that, Abby, I know you like it. When you want to go and leave, once a year, they will carry you and your family to where? You go, and you go to USA, you stay in a hotel, you enjoy your life with your children, and you come back to work again. Don't you like that too? <laughs> hey, I declare, God will give you great job. Yeah. Do you know what happened about that bank? After I would have joined them, three years later, the bank go under. The bank does not exist again in Nigeria. Am I communicating? Hello? She ain't me by. Now, Baba has known that if I leave university where I'm teaching, 
And where I am pastoring so many children, and I go, I will enjoy for how many years? Hey, damn it, long How many years? Two or three maximum, Abby. And the bank will fall. And then you see somebody walking on the street of Lagos, carrying CV again, looking for a job. That's why you must know God now. Because he knows the end from where? From the beginning. That's why you call him Alpha and what? Alpha and what? Alpha and what? Alpha and what? Is the Alpha and the, the first and what? And the last. He knows the hand from where? From the beginning. So if you use only your sense, that's why some people, they will enjoy two years. They will suffer 20 years. Because they don't follow God. They don't know how God guides. That's why we are teaching you about Holy Ghost. That's why we are teaching you about what? Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I receive Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I love Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I want Holy Ghost. Amen. And it will rest on you. I, I say it will rest on you. So, how many wisdom have I discussed now? Number one. Number two. Uh -huh. Number three now. Demonic what? Uh -huh. Good. You are in a school. Blessed are your ears. Because they are hearing these things. What is demonic wisdom? How many of you have heard about Yahoo Plus? Uh -huh. Now, there are a different grade of Yahoo. There is a Yahoo where you Jacob people. Jacob people mean you go to the account of people and you begin to move their money out. You cheat them. But Yahoo Plus tell you you combine Yahoo with what? With Juju. You know what they call Juju? Hello? Huh? Eh? You know what they call Juju? You don't know? Huh? Eh? Fetish practices. What is fetish practices? You go to Babalawo. How many of you know what they call Babalawo here? Who is Babalawo? Oh yeah, come and tell me. Oh yeah, come, come, come. We are children now. We are learning. Oh yeah, come. Good girl, come. You don't want to talk. Are you afraid? Oh yeah, come. Come to pastor. Oh yeah, climb up. Ah. Instruction. Oh yeah, come on. They are clapping for you already. Oh yeah, come on. Come up! Don't be shy. Don't, don't disturb her. The hand of God is upon you. She doesn't want to come up. Oh yeah, sit down. Sit down. You are blessed. Who wants to come up and tell us what Babala means? Now you, you, you. Oh yeah, come. <laughs> oh yeah, come now. You don't want to come. Oh yeah, you come and tell us. Why are you afraid? Okay, who would like to come and tell us? Okay, come. Good boy. What is Babalawo? They are traditional abalists. They are traditional abalists. Clap for him now. He tried. He has gone. Yes, we again want to add to what he has said. Oh, yeah, come, good boy. Come. Where is my boy that came first in the Bible? Where is he? Where are you now? Oh, yeah, come. You come and tell us too. Clap for him, though. Yes. Oh, yeah. An abalist is someone that conducts fetish practices. Uh, uh, somebody who conducts fetish practices. Yeah. An abalist is a person that has relationship with um, gods, small, smaller gods, and then uses those things to solve people's problems in the wrong Use way. Use what? Use those things to solve people's problems. Smaller god. Smaller god. You see, he has some kind of divination. Go and sit down. You are blessed. You know, when Yoruba people say Babalawo, they are talking about people who conjure with strange spirit. Am I communicating? Hello? You are just saying they are, Abalis is different. Hab. The word Abalis is from the word what? Habs. That is using leaves. Using root of plant to put together some drug that are traditionally done. So, you must understand there are some abalists when they put leaves and all that together, they will conjure spirit. Are you with me? 
That's what they call incantation. Igede. I begin to think we. One we all four. Say that you can't do Yoruba. All four. Unta we four ba lo ba ba. Unta we four ba lo ba ba. You understand all that kind of thing? <laughs> you see enchantment they call that? They chant it. Are you listening to me? We are in a devotion, learning wisdom. That's why I'm showing you the type of wisdom. Demonic wisdom are wisdom that taught from the sun. Are you with me? From unknown spirits. Now, let me give you an illustration. There was a small boy that fell under anointing here yesterday. Now, by the time I came to him, he looks as if he's sleeping. By the time I lay hand, his eyes came very wide, open the eyes. Ah! He was unconscious. What happened when you see people fall under anointing is that there is a conflict between the power of light and what? And power of darkness. There are some of us, we are under certain invisible enchantments. Certain invisible power. Now, when the Lord brings you out like this and want to break them, there will be conflict. That's why you see the struggle. And when God breaks it, you just see the person will just become peaceful. The strange spirit will go and the spirit of God will rest. Sometimes you see the person speaking with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongue. Now rest will come. There are some, when they fall like that, the spirit will be stubborn. We still stay. And we are saying, in the name of Jesus, fire, fire, go! Sometimes the spirit will look at you and who are you? Why are you talking to me? Who gave you the authority over me? This person inside, I am inside it. I have rights there. Then we quote the Bible. That the Bible says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive deliver. But thus hear the Lord. Even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible what? Delivered. What the Bible is saying is that even when you legally give demon permission to enter your life, when God comes, he nullifies the power. Are you with me? And demon know the word of God. When you are speaking the word, when you are using the name, because the Bible says God has given Jesus a name that is what? A name that is what? At the name of Jesus, what must happen? Hello, what must happen? <laughs> but there are some of you, you are saying, God, give me Holy Ghost. But you already have it. But you think you don't have it. But as you pray more, it rests on you more. And because there is no conflict, grace is certainly more and more and more on your life. You may not be wondering, why? Daddy, why didn't I fall also? You don't have to fall. Are you with me? Is somebody hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes. I am teaching you the truth. It is not a must that you should fall. You don't have to fall before you know that God has taught you. Am I communicating? God, people who fall, that is the way the Holy Ghost want to what? Want to do it. Am I communicating to somebody? So demonic wisdom are when people are trying to practice and demonstrate the use of terrible spirits. Unseen spirit that are not the spirit of God to solve some problem. So Yahoo Plus, we go to Babalawu, Babalawu, we tell them. Say me, you have read about it, Abi. Babalawu, we tell them, look for a girl. Are you hearing me? So he will look for a girl and say, You are my girlfriend. I love you. To return. Is somebody hearing me? He will tell you you are the sugar in my tea. You are not actually the sugar. He's looking for somebody to use. Are you hearing me? 
precious daughter that God has raised a gift to a family. You say you fall in love with one boy. Because of that, you don't listen to your parents again. And you follow. After one slice the girlfriend, put it in a, in a, in, is it a bag or, or both? Carry it on the head. Want to dispose human being away. They caught him. They said she opened it. You see a whole beautiful girl. So when they are sending text to you, be careful who you say yes to. Come and visit me. I have malaria. Hey, you, you become the Panadol that you will use. If you say you have malaria, say, I am not a nurse. Go to the hospital. What do I say you should tell them? I am not your hospital. I mean, are you the hospital? <laughs> am I talking to you? There was one girl in pedigree. She used to read together with a boy. Is somebody listening to Voice of Wisdom this morning? You who read with boys, they read together. So this day, the boy didn't come. Ah, then took the phone and called the boy. Why didn't you come today? Say, I am sick. I have malaria. And the guy packed his load. And when, where is your house? The boy described me. I am living at number four, Kinika, Omati Obaran Street. Omati Obaran Lomani Niari. I am living at number four, Omati Obaran Sima Maleno Street. I'm saying is that number four disobedient child streets are you with me and she left and went there the boy didn't have any malaria and when she got there the boy raped her so the girl now cried to the school eh, I went to Yemi's house to their director and Yemi raped me where did Yemi rape you inside Yemi's room how did you get to Yemi's room? Was Yemi's room allocated to you? Are you hearing me? There are some of you, you go and dress up, you carry your body to where they will defile you. Abi Mokwaro, wa tuto eti, wa toy mu. We are in the classroom of wisdom. Which classroom are we this morning? We are in wisdom classroom. Wisdom classroom. And may you be wise. In the name of Jesus. May you be wise. In the name of Jesus. So demonic wisdom are practices that tap into demonic spirit. Am I communicating? Anything you are doing that have demonic undertow, maybe they say you should bring your Bible. They want to help you soak it in something that you may pass. That is demonic wisdom. So there is one Babala somewhere. When you do something on your Bible, you will just get first class. You raw. What fail? You fail your law. <laughs> demonic wisdom that's why you see some yahoo boys when the money comes what happened to some of them they run mad one on the street got out of the car started removing the trouser and started running up and down demonic wisdom hey never never join anybody in such practice sometimes they will give you big big ring Talismanic ring. Are you with me? They put it, put it, put it. When you use it to touch a lady like this, bam, she will be following you. So when you see those boys, they want to touch, say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Are you hearing me, girls? In the name of Jesus, stop that. Stop there. And whatever he or she wants to do in your life will be neutralized. That's what we are teaching you here. 
don't, don't think I am telling you. Demonic wisdom also has power. Eh? Oh, yeah. Open Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. But can you compare their power with the power of God? Okay. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's take it from verse 10 to 12. Children, are you with me? Say yes, yes. Let's yes, yes. say, Pastor, Pastor, I am hearing you. Ah, you didn't say it as I said. Say, Pastor, Pastor, I am hearing what you are saying. And I will follow the word of God in the name of Jesus. Look at that scripture. Can we read it, everybody? What does that Bible say? Be strong in what? Be strong in what? Be strong in what? That's all they say in the name of Jesus. I receive the strength of God. I shall be strong in the Lord. Amen. That one is for another day. Being strong in God. Being strong in God is another teaching. Yet to law, how can you be strong? Let's leave that to another time. Okay? Now verse 11. Oh yeah, want to go. Yeah, look at that verse 11. When they say put on, what do they mean? Look at me. You see my suit now. Come and take my back. What should I do? I should wear it, Abby. Baba say you should wear what? What does God say you should wear now? Put on what? All hammer. Prayer. The word of God. Are you with me? Fasting. Hammer of God. Hammer. Hammer are instrument for war. Are you with me? What? They say David has a hammer. There will be harrow there. Abby, there will be bullet. If you see on that, they have hammer. They have their gun. Abby, they have their bullet. They have their fire. Hammer. Put on the whole hammer. Don't put on just one. The whole. He said, you wear it, put it on. When the devil is coming, he sees you. Eh? He said, this one. Mm -mm, I'm not going there. He'll be looking again. You look at somebody who is not wearing anything. You slap him in the face. You turn again. See another one. Say you are wearing um, uh, this one. If I shoot him, it won't work. He doesn't want to waste his bullets. Say put on. What? The whole hammer. That's why we are teaching you about how to conduct devotion. We are teaching you about how to listen to instruction. We are teaching you about how to pray. When you wake up in the morning, you don't know whether any God day anywhere to pray to. You are going. Put on. Ah. Put on. What, everybody? The whole armor. If a pastor does not put on the whole armor, the devil will kick him off. But when he puts on the whole armor, he will stand. Bam. Are you with me? Because he's standing inside who? Inside God. When you put on the armor of God, you'll be standing in who? Everybody? Inside God. Your life will be hid with Christ inside who? Inside God. But when you walk outside, you remove the armor, you walk outside, you carry your body to somebody who will defile it. You join people to go and be doing something that. We displease God. No, when you displease God, what happened to the presence of God? The presence of God goes away. I pray for each of you today. And my boy that is looking somewhere else. I pray for you today. The presence of God will not leave you. The presence of God will not leave you. The presence of God will not leave you. In the name of Jesus. So, we have talked about three. Number one, number two, number three. 
And what is number four now? Godly with the wisdom of God. So let's go back to our James chapter 3 and we read from verse 17 to 18. We are now going to the wisdom that you need. Let someone say, I, will, I like that one. The wisdom that you need. Yes? Verse 17. Can we read one to go? Hey, everybody! You know the way God speaks. God is a practical God. He doesn't tell you one big language and theory. He said, wisdom that is from where? From above, from God. Is First, what happened to wisdom that is from above? It is pure. The wisdom of God will not teach you to go and defy yourself. That's why I say it's pure. When you are losing certain wisdom to know how to dodge your parents, you know, there is a girl who was living with grandma. So when he's taking care of grandma in the city room, the boyfriend will come to the window and be looking. Deborah, Deborah. You hear me? You hear me? You hear me? So you know grandma is very old woman. Doesn't know. Grandma will say, who is talking there? He says, it's my, that girl. He say boy talking. He say it's a girl talking. And he'll go and look. He say, don't worry, I'm coming. I'm coming. Is that wisdom of God? The wisdom you use to do mago mago, is that wisdom of God? The wisdom from above is first what? So when you are doing your wisdom to do, to tell lies, to manipulate, to do things that are evil, to deceive, is that wisdom of God? God is a practical God. He's just telling you how to know. When, you are, when they ask you, who did this thing? Ah, mommy, I am the one. I wanted to put it on the thing, and it fell down. Abby, I'm broke. In the house, when something breaks, you say, who broke it? Do you always find the person who break it? Nobody breaks it. The thing just break on its own. I, ah, ah, I didn't leave this thing like this. Who did it? Nobody. Nobody. Is that wisdom from above? So that's why I say wisdom from above is pure. When they say something is pure, what do we mean? Oh yeah, another word for purity. Pure. Yes, oh yeah, my boy. My boy. Yes. Come. Banjo, come. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Come. When they say something is pure. Yes, yes, yes. My boy in green. Don't worry. If you are taller than me, we will be looking at our height here. Oh yeah, come, 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 come. They say something is false. Pure. Pure. Wisdom from above. Pure. Yes. The girl in black shirt. Yeah, come, 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 come. You are blessed. Yes, now come. You are the one we are in black shirt. There. God bless you. When they say something is pure, what do they mean? Holy. 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 Everybody say holy. holy. Something that is pure is what? Is holy. If any pastor is teaching you not to be holy, holiness does not matter. Eh? Eh, 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 don't be eh, sin conscious. Anything that is sinful, you must be conscious and say, no, I don't want it. This is not good for me. Pure things are holy. God, oh yeah, put your hands together for you. Pure. False. Pure. Yeah. Neat. Huh? Neat. It's neat. Yes. Okay. Something that is neat. Something that you can wake up and tell people, this is it, oh. You are blessed. Yes. Take it. Something without blemish. Something without. Oh, you are saying it again. They didn't hear you. Something without blemish. Something without blame. Something without blemish. You have a white cloth. There is no dot of black or red there. A cloth is pure when there is no dirty things. What? On it. Something without blame. God bless you. Put your hands together for him. Yes. Something that is flawless. Things that are flawless. Flawless. So, you are redeemed to be like God. Put your hands together now. Actually, when we call you Christian, if we say you are a Christian, it means you are Christ-like. You are what? 
You are the like of Christ. You are the follower of Christ. And we should see purity. Purity. That's why even if you fall into something impure, you should be running to where you'll be washed. Am I communicating? That's why when we started the camp, what did we first deal with? We dealt with what? Sin. All the sin that we have committed. All the lies. We came to the blood of Jesus to wash us. That's why we said, those who have not given their life, you give it afresh. Those who have, won, you have walked away from Jesus, you rededicate your life. That is running to the person who will cleanse you, who will purge you. And that's why many times we say, when you do something that is wrong, the first person to turn to is God and say, Daddy, forgive me. I have deceived my teacher. Forgive me. Have mercy. Are you with me? That's why we teach you to ask God to forgive you. And when you do it, the peace of God will come immediately. So, wisdom of God. Anything you are doing in life that is not pure, is not from God. Once you have to be covering something, something is there that is not of God. Peaceable. Gentle. Willing to yield. You know, God's wisdom makes you to live in peace with people. Are you with me? When you are always fighting, quarrelsome, is that godly? That's no godly wisdom. Wisdom of God, by the time you carry yourself, when you are a, a lady of peace, a boy that pursues peace with everybody, you are, a God, you are carrying godly wisdom in the way you conduct your life. Gentle, 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 not violent. Gentle, not quarrelsome. Gentle. Everybody say gentle. Say Mr. Gentle. I am now Mr. Gentle. Say I am now Mr. Gentle. For the Holy Ghost dwell inside of me. I am Miss Gentle now. For the Holy Ghost dwell in me. Amen. Then you go ahead. Willing to do what? As I'm giving you instruction, you must be willing to turn, willing to yield. Don't stay where you are. Turn to what God is saying and obey it. That's willingness to yield. There are some people, they say they are not teachable because they are always wise in their eyes. They don't listen to anybody. They, don't, they just listen to their stubborn spirit. Willing to yield. Somebody who is ready to make amendment. Somebody is ready to reorder his life. When you are ready to reorder your life, in line with the word of God, you are willing to yield. Full of what? Look at it. Full of what? Mercy. When you are wicked, are you godly? You must be a massive one to others. You have two things you can share with others. Mercy. Full of mercy. Say, I am full of mercy. I will not live a wicked life. I will live a compassionate life. Ah, somebody is not with me. I will live a compassionate life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I will live a compassionate life in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is that boy looking at there? What are you looking at? You should look up. Don't look down. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead. Good fruit. Are you following it? Those are signs. That you have God's wisdom. What do I call them? Somebody? Signs. Good fruit. Do you know there are about seven there? Seven too. Signs that you will know. What I am doing is from the wisdom of God. It must be pure. must be peaceable. must be gentle. You must be willing to make a man to yield. must be full of mercy. Good fruit. Without what? It is low. Without what? Partiality. Now, number seven. 
without hypocrisy. The boy in blue, yeah, come. What is hypocrisy? Come now, come. Yeah, you now, you. Yeah, yeah, come, 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 come. You can't come, oh. <laughs> I say, oh, no, Pastor, don't bring me out. Pastor, leave me here. Oh, yeah, come, come, come. Yes, come now, come, come, come. Oh, yeah, come, come, if you want to come, come. What is hypocrisy? We are rounding off. What is hypocrisy? It's our last devotion. So we have to do it well. What is hypocrisy? Yes? Ah, don't fall. Stand where? Okay. Yeah. When something is fake. Huh? When something is fake. When something is what? Ah, hey, listen, city chawa. Fake. People that are practicing hypocrisy are fake. Fake. When you are manifesting what you are not, you are trying to behave as if you are a godly child, but you roll on quite roll. Hypocrisy. Eh? Yeah. Chameleon. White calling himself black. God bless you. Oh, yeah, put your hand together for her. Yes. Yeah. Hypocrisy. Something unrealistic. Something unrealistic. Unrealistic. Ah, a bolare. Unrealistic. Oh, yeah, look for another grammar. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Unrealistic. Unrealistic. Something not possible. Something not possible. Something not possible. Hypocrisy is possible. You have big, big English. Oh, yeah, clap for him. He has tried. Yes, yeah, somebody is raising. Oh, yeah, come, come, come. Bright, come. Bright, come. Don't worry. I'm looking at your face. Ah, hey, no, what's okay? Ni? Hypocrisy. I just want I, you. You will not live hypocritical life in Jesus. Ni? I am. I take on that. Don't behave like people. Sometimes your mommy can be inside. Tell that person coming. I am not inside. How many of you have your mommy or daddy told? Tell them I am not there. They are teaching you. Uh -huh. So we're going to. Oh yeah, come, come, come out. Oh yeah, yeah, come out. Oh yeah, come. Join them. One more hand. The brother, you want to talk? You want to talk? You want to talk? Okay, let me pick. Don't worry because I'm, I'm used to your faces. Let me pick somebody else. We some people are running from pastor. Oh yeah, come, come, come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Four people. What are we learning? What are we trying to look at, everybody? The word hypocrisy. Are you with me? I know as we are saying it here and there, you then can understand. Anywhere you hear hypocrisy, you run. I don't belong there. I am not one. We have give them microphone. Yes? Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy means to pretend to be something. To be to pretend. pretension. When you are pretending, what are you doing? You are behaving hypocritically when you are pretending. When you are pretending. You can tell mommy I am sick, but you are not sick. Eh? You can tell mommy, they say we should bring money for chemistry today. You know your mommy is illiterate. You say they say chemo and then three, two money. <laughs> There are some funny children in our generation. You know, many of our parents are, are illiterate. So some parents, some boys will come to that. They say we should bring money for Baho. So one of them will say they say we should bring money for Logi. Can you imagine? Ah, uh, there are some bastard on the head. <laughs> yes. Um, the person that is hypocrisy means ah, you are our teacher. Give her the microphone. Talk to us like teacher. Let everybody hear you. Hypocrisy means that maybe like um, maybe I like like a worker in a church. So you used to do like a holy person in the church, but but I used to do holy in church, but you are a sinner that you used to do all sort of things. Are you people. listening to what she's saying? Yes. You are in the camp. You are behaving like a holy person. You just carry yourself. Holy brother. Yeah. Holy girl. In the church, oh, holy. When he's out, eh, he becomes somebody else. God bless you. That's a good illustration. So you are, you are practicing hypocrisy. When in the church, you are looking holy. Outside, you are something else. 
Yes. Showing a false image. Huh? Showing, showing a false image. Giving false image. Image. Ah, these people, they have grammar. False image. Oh, yeah. Your brain is blessed. Yeah. Yeah, go, 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 go and sit down. Amen. Ah, great grammar. False image. False imagination. Amen. Ah, I like grammar. This, this guy is hard. Uh, you are good, oh. Hey. Put your hand together for yourself. So the God of heaven likes justice. That's why I say without partiality. Stop being partial. Deal with people the way God will deal with them. So wisdom from above teaches us to walk to manifest this. Verse 18. Verse 18. Yeah? Can we read it? Amen. So, all these are fruit of righteous living. Don't forget my language. God is a practical God, not theory. That's why many times when he's speaking, he speaks with things that you can relate with. He speaks with proverbs. I am stopping here this morning. Can somebody say, Father, thank you for what you have taught me. I worship you in the name of Jesus. Can you say, Father, thank you for what you have taught me. I appreciate you in the name of Jesus. Can I say, Father, thank you for your great hand that is stretched forth on my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. I declare baptism of God's wisdom. Can you hear me? I say I declare baptism of God's wisdom. I pray for you today. No power shall be able to take you away from this part. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your heart is blessed. Your brain is blessed. Your thought is blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Before your pastor comes up to talk to you about the next thing, as we go out now, it is time for our breakfast, okay? But we have to be very snappy about it. Are you with me? So as you are going, you go to your room. Those who have extra mattresses, are you with me? You go and pick it. You take it to in front of that, you know that concreted place in front of your dining room. Are you with me? Or dining hall, rather. You drop it there. 